After um, I read Bone Gap, I picked up Behold the Bones by Natalie C. Parker. This is a sequel to her debut novel, uh, Beware the Wild, which I read, I think, when it came out last year. Um, or whenever it came out. Um, this one, I gave, I think, three out of five stars. I, I did not like it as much as Beware the Wild. Um, like, in a lot of, I don't know, I mean, it, it really had, this is another book that kind of had a lot of potential, but then kind of let me down at the end, because the plotline was actually really awesome, and it does tie into the previous book, so you're not going to be able to understand what's going on in this one if you don't read the first one, even though this is, um, tech, this is about the character, uh, Candy instead of uh, Sterling, who the first book was about. So it's about her best, Sterling's best friend, who you see in the first book, but you don't really know her backstory. And I thought it would be really good, because I actually did like, I think I actually really liked Candy a lot better than Sterling to a degree um, when I read the first one, but I don't know. Getting inside her head, I wasn't as enthused. Um, I don't know. The problem with this book is that it concentrated way too much on the teen angst angle, and it not enough on the ghosts. So much so that the fact that ghosts are popping up out of the uh, the swamp, um, we never really told why, and that bothered me. So because we, it's I don't know, but. Yeah, it's just annoying. And Candy's mom is, like, so annoying. Like, I can't stand her. She's just... And the fact that Candy gave in to her at one point and her stupidity made me disrespect her because of that. I think she should have stood her ground uh, and her own principles, personally. And that kind of made me angry, too. But anyway, I don't know. This was, th this was not the kind of book I wanted to read when I picked it up, which I think probably... Well, I say probably it that made me not like it as much, but I don't think I would like it anyway. So, I was really surprised by the love interest, though, because it was from a character I was not expecting. So, and I kind of liked it better because of that, but uh, not enough to save the book. After that, I picked up Unwind by uh, Neil Schusterman. This is the first book in the Unwind, I think, trilogy. I'm not sure. <clears throat> um, so this is, this one was recommended to me by my friend Abigail, and it is a, uh, dystopian, but kind of a really interesting one. Um, essentially what it's about is, like, kind of, um, there's been another American Civil War, and, um, kind of about, like, uh, you know, the people who are, like, pro-life, like, anti-abortion, and the people who are for it, um, which is also, I don't know, I don't know what made the author come up with this, to be honest. It was just kind of a really weird concept, but oddly enough, it worked, and it turned into, like, this horrible thing where, and s because death, like, abortion was illegal in this book, um, you can't technically get rid of your kids, um, but you can, but they can be unwound, or you can do that, which means that they are literally taken apart for, um, like, transplants and stuff, but technically they're not dead, so it's okay. Like, they live in other people. Like, you have to use every bit. Um, and it was just, really creepy, really horrifying. Like, this book actually is- actually creeped me out. Like, I haven't read a book that genuinely did that in a long time, um, but I was genuinely disturbed by this book in parts, and I really liked it because of that. <laughs> so, it's a really- um, I think- like, I did- it, I did like the characters, but I- they weren't, like, my favorite characters ever. Um, but I kind of just enjoyed reading this book for the sake of 
what it was just because it's so weird and different like I've never heard of any concept like this before and I don't usually read or enjoy dystopians because they're always the same and they're always flat but this one actually while I don't necessarily ever ever see this as possible which I'm usually kind of mm, but it was still a really like creepy um just idea that while not possible, like, thinking of it being possible is just, like, kind of sobering in a way. So, yeah, I think I give that one four out of five stars. And I, I enjoy it. I, I'm looking to continue the other ones because it kind of ends on a cliffhanger. That's exciting. After that, I picked up a few graphic novels because I just wanted something quick to read in the middle of the month. So I actually picked up my first ever Marvel comic books, and those were the Loki Agent of Asgard series. The first volume, which is Trust Me, the second volume, which is I Cannot Tell a Lie, and then the third one, Last Days. So um, uh, these were also recommended to me by my friend Abigail, um, who read them first, and I like, overall, I wasn't totally disappointed in my first experience with Marvel, um, but let me explain to you something about Marvel. If you do not read, like, every comic book they come out with, then there's gonna be about half of every comic book that you're not even gonna get. Plus, they, like, jump around so much. See, you, typically, when, when I read graphic novels, they're, like, based off of books, because... I think it's kind of cool when people do that, so I like to read them. Um, I haven't read, like, an actual comic book before, but, so, this kind of jumping into this was like, uh, okay, whatever. I mean, they reference everything that happens in other comic books, but still it's like, okay, so if I ended up going out and getting all these, I'd be reading, like, 20 more comic books, and it's just ridiculous. Um, so that kind of made me, like, ugh, annoyed, but... Overall, I actually kind of enjoyed the story of these, and I love Loki. He's one of my favorite characters. Um, and I'm not saying I won't ever read more Marvel comics. It's just, it might be a while. Um, so anyway, the first volume I gave three out of five stars. This was actually the easiest one to follow, I think. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was good. The second one was actually my favorite. I gave it four out of five stars. So that one... Um, while there were bits that were, like, super confusing, I, I enjoyed the storyline of this one best. And the third one was just completely confusing, and I think I'm gonna rate it three stars. Um, I kind of liked where it went, and it kind of wrapped it up, but I really hope they write more. Especially since there was literally no, like, there wasn't any reconciliation between him and Thor, and that annoys me because that's the part that I cared about. Um, but anyway, so I wasn't totally disappointed in reading them, and they were good fun, so, you know, it was just something I wanted to try out, and I did enjoy it, so I thought it was cool. Um, after that, I picked up The Beast Within by... Hmm, can't find... Oh dear, losing my bookmarks. Um, I can't find the author's name. Uh, Serena Valentina. Anyway, this is a, it's a retelling of the Beast side of the story from the Disney movie. Um, I just kind of picked this up because I thought it would be a really quick read, and it is. And it was cute. I, I, it, like, the Be Beauty and the Beast is one of my favorite Disney movies. Um, so, I, I enjoyed it. I mean, it's certainly not the Beauty and the Beast retelling I'm always looking for, but it's still, it was enjoyable, and it's definitely tied into the movie, but it's kind of interesting to see the backstory, too. So, I gave that one a uh, 3 out of 5 stars. There's not much really to say about it, because you all know the story anyway, probably. And it wasn't, it wasn't the best written book I've ever read, but it was a cute, fun read, so I enjoyed it anyway. 